This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, welcome Mount Carmel Church Nation, Mount Carmel Church family. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and worship. Don't you realize something that God has created us to worship him? I want you to think about that. God created you and I to worship him. So won't you come on and grab, grab, grab your neighbor? Won't you grab, move, move everything around? Won't you come and worship the Lord with me and let us exhort his name together? Come on, I'm going to give you, you know how we do. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds today just to give God some praise, give God some honor, give God his due worship. God, we thank you, God, for creating us because we know now the God that you created us to worship you. And God, for that, God, we're going to shabak you, God. For that, God, we're going to lift up our hands. For that, God, we're going to stump our feet, God. And for that, God, we're going to clap our hands and say thank you. Glory to God. God, we may not feel like it, but you're still good. God, we may be going through some circumstances that we does, does not that seem favorable to us right now, but you're still good. We may be going through some trials and tribulations, even on today, but you're still good. Come on. Won't you worship the Lord with me? Won't you exalt his name together. Hasn't the Lord been good? And when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. I got to say hallelujah. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't even tell it all. But God's been good. God's been kind. God's been so good. God's been merciful. God's been graceful to us all. And for that God, I want to say glory. For that God, I lift up my hands. I offer up this sacrifice of praise to you, God. You're good. Come on, worship the Lord with me. God, I love you. God, I thank you. God, I bow down to you, God. And Father God, I worship you, God. If I could run, I would run. If I had 10,000 tons, I couldn't even tell you all. I thank you. I worship you. I worship your name. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. If I could shout, I would shout right now. Won't you praise the Lord with me? Come on. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. God, we love you. God, we thank you. God, I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for keeping us. I thank you, God, for your grace. I thank you, God, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 I hope you are excited because I'm excited because God has been so good and God has been so kind and his grace and his mercy endures forever. Man, won't you, won't you recognize that God created us to worship him? God created us to give him glory. Hallelujah. That's something to think about. That's something just to, if you still got breath in your body, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. So thank you for praising the Lord with me and exalting his name on high, on high, on high. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. I got to calm myself down because I'm so excited to be on online worship with you on this morning. Hallelujah. Well, won't you pray with me as we invite God into this space into our online worship experience. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for allowing us just to wake up and to say, I thank you. Father God, we're just going to take a couple of moments, even as we invite you into this space, just to worship you. We're just going to lift our hands right now and just say thank you. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, you're worthy of all the praise. When I think about how good you are, you are worthy of all the praise. Now, Father God, as we lift up our hands and lift up our voices unto you, Father God, we invite you, we invite your presence into this space, into this holy tabernacle. God, we invite you into this online worship experience. God, you may not come sometimes when we want you to come, but you are our own time God, and we're thankful that you are also our online God. 
And Father God, we invite you to do what you want to do. We invite your presence. We invite your Holy Spirit into this space, into wherever we are. God, do what you want to do. Do what you want to deliver how you want to deliver, save how you want to save, heal how you want to heal. God, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome into this place. We decrease now, and you, we pray that your presence increase, and we'll be careful to give your name honor and glory. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, my God, our Lord, and our Redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. God is so good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our scripture today, God is so good. His, our scripture today is coming from Philippians, the third chapter. And I'm going to begin at the 17th verse, and we're going to go all the way down to the 21st verse. 21st verse. And we're going to uh, end it at the first verse in the next chapter, which is chapter 4. Amen? That's Philippians. Paul in his letter to Philippians, the third chapter. And we're going to begin at the 17th verse. And we're going to end to the next chapter. I want you to follow along with me. We're going to end the next chapter on the first verse. Amen? Amen. The Word of God speaks as thus. Brothers... And sisters, join in with me, imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I'll tell you even more with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is in the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it's from there that we is, are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Now follow on with me to the next chapter, that's chapter four, and we're just going to read that first verse. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, whom I love and long for my joy and crown, Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The word of God is good, isn't it? It is so good. It's so refreshing and so empowering is God's word. Amen. Amen. If, you, if this is your first time visiting with us or you are a first time the guest, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to put first right there on our YouTube chat right there. Put first and somebody will properly, somebody will properly welcome you in and we welcome you to our online worship experience. Mount Carmel, you know how we do. I want you to take this time and, and show the love towards each other. If you had not seen nobody in a long time, I want you to chat with them and say, I thank God for you worshiping, joining us and worshiping with me on our online worship experience. I want you to chat and, and connect with each other right there on that chat, on that feed right there, on our YouTube feed. I want you to go ahead and chat. And you know, the Bible says that they will know that we are his disciples by the love that we share towards one another. So at this time, I'm going to give you some time just to share the love with one another. Say, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? And if you have not connected with us, I want you to like our YouTube page. Go ahead and like our YouTube page. I want you to like our Facebook page. 
Uh huh. And also, I want you to like our Instagram, and we also have a Twitter. I want you to like our Twitter page. I want you to stay connected with us, so you be able to see what's going on here at the Mount Carmel Baptist Church of Charlotte, North Carolina. You connect with those social outlets. You'll be able, social media outlets. You'll be able to see what's going on, all the uh, all the various activities and ministry outlets that we're doing here at Mount Carmel. Amen. I want you to connect that with us. I got a couple, of, a couple of things I want to share with you. On Wednesday nights, Wednesday nights at 7, if you connect on our Facebook page, our pastor, our pastor will ha- is having a Bible study. have a Bible study on Wednesday nights from 7, 7 p.m. right there on our Facebook page. And if you're not on Facebook, if you don't do the Facebook uh, thing or you don't do the Facebook social outlet, you can go online. You can go to our, web, our website. I'm sorry, our website. Go to our website, mcbaptist.com mtbaptist.org, and you can be able to join in and go to an awesome time of teaching and studying of the Word of God during our midweek Bible study worship experience. Amen. Amen. Well, it's giving time. It's giving time. On behalf of Pastor uh, Casey R. Kimbrough, Lady Kimbrough, and the whole and the entire Mount Carmel Church family, we like to thank you for your contributions and your dedication and your commitment into giving on this side of glory, on this side, and, and to our endeavors on this side of the kingdom of God. We just want to say thank you, and we are so thankful because, you know, the Bible said God loves a cheerful giver, and we just thank you guys for continuing to give your contributions, your tithes and your offerings to our ministry here at Mount Carmel Baptist Church. <clears throat> So there are several ways in which you can give. The first way is, is that you can do by Giveify. There's an app on your phone. You put Giveify. If you put uh, Giveify and you put Mount Carmel Baptist Church, you'll see a picture of our lovely pastor, and you'll be able to give that way. That's one outlet that you can give. Another outlet that you can give is that you can go online. You can put If you type in MC Baptist Shares, if you put that in, MC Baptist Shares, you put that in, you'll be able to give that way. And if you want to take some time and you want to drive up to our church, you can. From Mondays through Thursdays, that's from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on Wednesdays, it's extended from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's 9, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and also extended from 3 uh, p.m. to 6 p.m. And that is on Wednesdays, and somebody will be here to accept your contributions and your tithes and your offerings, however, however you see, see fit uh, to do it that way. And that uh, address is <clears throat> 7237 Tucker C.G. Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28214. Somebody will be here to receive your contributions. And another way, the last way that you can give, and there are multiple ways that you can give, the last way is that you can mail in your contributions. You can mail it in, and that's, of course, again, is 7237 Tucker Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, and that is 28214. And also, I believe on our feed, you'll be able to see uh, that address as we go throughout our worship experience here online. Amen. Well, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's bless our offering. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to give. We take it as a privilege and as an honor to give back in this manner. God, we know that giving is an act and it's a form of worship. So we give as a cheerful giver to you. God, we thank you, God, for allowing us to give. God, we celebrate this offering and we give it unto you. Father God, we just want to thank you. Father God, we thank you, God, that whatever used, whatever thing that's used in this contribution, we pray that is used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and for your glory. God, we love you and we honor you through our giving. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, listen. 
I enjoyed my time with you. I was, I've, been, I've been so excited to worship with you on this point. Now let's get ready and go to the next level as our worship team takes us, takes us higher in him and takes us into and, and invite us more into the presence of the Lord. I just love you and I just can't wait and I'm excited to see you all next time. Much love to you. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise God throughout this online worship experience. Much love to you. Can't wait to see you till next time. Amen. Much love.
Good morning, beloved, and welcome to Worship. Thank you for making Mount Carmel your church of choice today. It's my privilege to share this word with you. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse number 17. Philippians 3, 17. And there you find these words recorded. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example of you have set us, set, have set in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them. And now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destructive. Their God is the belly and their glory is their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord. In this way, my beloved. And I want to focus on those last two verses Verse 21, he will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, may my joy, my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Bless now this word as we share it in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. These are strange and challenging times that we're living in. And I can honestly say that not a day goes by when I do not hear of someone's pain. I hear of the unavoidable suffering of life. I hear of the demise of relationships, the death of loved ones, the betrayal of close friends. I hear of the pain and sometimes agony that people are going through. And I want to say to you today that if you are in pain, rather it's physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, I want you to know that God has not forsaken you, that God has not abandoned you. The promise of God is that I'm with you always, even until the end of the ages. And what Paul teaches us is that God works in the midst of our pain. I recall the story of the man born blind in John 9, verses 1 through 3. It says, as he walked along, he saw a man, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that the work, so that God's work might be revealed in him. I think of the death of Jesus's dear friend Lazarus in John 11, 1 and 4. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Mary was one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his, he his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But Jesus heard it. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of Man might be glorified through it. And isn't that a different way of looking at pain and struggle? To think that it's possible that in the midst 
of that pain that God can be glorified. And when we confront pain, it's natural for us to want to look away. It's natural to feel overwhelmed. But pain is real. Pain is visceral. Pain will make you sit up and take notice. Rather, it's physical pain, emotional pain, financial pain, spiritual pain. We have all know, we have all known the crippling effects of pain. Pain is like fire. Once it's set ablaze, it seems that it doesn't burn out. That it must be dealt with it. And yet, there are so many different ways that we choose to deal with pain. Some people try to deny pain, hoping it will go away, and so they deny it. Other people compartmentalize it, and they say, uh, stay over here and don't bother me. And some will even have the courage to confront it and own it. And I'm not sure what method you choose to deal with your pain, but I do know that you have had pain and that if you're living in this world, you will experience pain. And I do know that we have to find a method how to deal and handle our pain. And that's what I want to talk with you today. I want to talk with you that in the midst of your pain, that you find pain purpose, God's purpose in the midst of that pain and turn that pain, that purpose into an instrument of inspiration to others. And so you take that pain and move from pain to purpose to promise. And Paul says, then stand, stand and stand right there in the context of it. The experts tell us, that if we choose the road of denial, if you try to say, I'm not going to deal with it, I'll just simply avoid it, that when we deny pain, it has a devastating long-term effect on our health. Sometimes it shows up as anxiety, sometimes as a panic attack, sometimes as oppression or sleep disorder or substance abuse or social isolation, hopelessness, pessimism, physical ailment. Pain can show up in all kinds of manifestations. Sometimes pain can be rooted so deeply that we learn to live with it and don't even realize that we're living with that pain. That's a whole nother sermon. But now I, I want to be clear that pain, when you're going through it or in it, that it can serve a greater purpose. That pain does have lessons that it can teach us if we're willing and open to hear them. What are some of the positive things that emerge from pain? Pain can cause you to reflect and make new life choices. Pain can cause you to go deeper into your own compassion and have empathy for others. Pain can awaken a gratitude and appreciation that you never had before. Pain can cause you to move and take action and confront injustice. Pain can inspire you to seek out healthier habits and better relationships. Pain can awaken a profound sense and meaning of the very purpose of your life. And this is key. When you find purpose in your pain, you begin the essential journey of healing. And otherwise, you may not understand why such pain has occurred, but you can decide how you will choose to live with that painful experience and how you will navigate it. Many people live every day in pain. And yet they have turned that pain into a place of redemption, a place of witness, a place of inspiration, a place of promise. Let me give you two quick examples of what I'm talking about. Take the middle-aged man who has stage four cancer. He's a, he's a stage four cancer survivor 
who volunteers at the cancer treatment center, who speaks to patients and families and shares his experience and supports them through their treatment. And speaking to patients, he encourages them and he uh, is highlighting them each and every day. Nothing is more meaningful to him than those moments of exchange when he is pouring into someone else. The young woman who is battered by addiction and having gone through addiction in high school, she now volunteers to help support teens who are recovering. She becomes a role model for girls in the program and an outspoken advocate for sobriety. And she helps them to walk through the hell of addiction. And she comes to understand, even though she has gone through this pain, that that pain now has produced a greater promise, not only in her life, but in the lives of so many others. I tell you, I tell you, when you begin to take control of what you're going through and you begin to encourage other people, that the purpose begins to surface and you find a newness of being. You become a new person. You understand that there is a greater self in you. You say, I'm in pain, but I will not be defeated by this pain. My spirit is alive. My spirit is strong. My spirit is greater than what I'm traveling through. And yes, I'm going through. Say, I'm going through. I'm going through. I'm going through. Paul gives us this example. Paul has firsthand experience with pain. Paul is the one who says, brothers and sisters, I want you to imitate me and observe how I have lived as an example before you. Paul is saying that I have a relentless commitment to Christ, that my faith in Christ is unstoppable and no amount of heartache or heartbreak or physical, emotional, spiritual pain will stop me from what God has called me to do. When you get time, go back and read in Acts 9 and read how Paul was breathing out threats and murderous threats against the disciples, how he went to the high priest and how he asked for letters to go to the synagogues of Damascus. And if he found any in the way, how he would drag men and women and bring them bound to Jerusalem. Read how Paul approached Damascus and on that road, a light knocks him and flashes before him. He falls to the ground and hears the voice, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? And the reply came, I am Jesus. I'm Jesus. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Get up and enter the city and you will be told what to do. Paul Three days without sight. And three days he neither ate nor drank because God was prepping him for a journey that he was entering. And he had no idea the kind of pain that he would face. Listen to his own testimony. 2 Corinthians 11, five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with a rod. Once I was stoned. Three times shipwrecked. For a day and a night I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in dangerous rivers from bandits draft. Uh, in danger from other people, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters in toil and hardship through many sleepless nights, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. And besides other things, I am under daily pressure 
because of my anxiety for all of the churches. He is saying that he has understood that his pain has purpose and his pain will lead to promise. He says in that same text, I was let down in a basket through a window in a wall to escape the hands of the king of the city of Damascus. Paul finds his greater purpose in the pain and the challenges he has faced. He says that this Jesus will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. By what power? By the power that also enables him to make all things subject unto himself. So, beloved, when you go through it, don't just go through it and don't get the lesson. No, go through it. But while you're going through it, go on and take ownership of it. Go on and stay close to God. Go on and see how God will use this for God's glory. God is transforming this old broken body and is being transformed into a new image. And even in its pain and its hurt, that pain may cause me, if I'm not careful, to lose sight of where God is calling me and where God is intentionally ordering my steps. Beloved, you can't ignore it. You can't ignore the relationship pain. You can't ignore the physical pain. You can't ignore the pain that you're going through. Some marriages, for example, are in pain. And if you ignore the pain, the marriage will break up. Your body may be in pain. You can't ignore it. You have to understand what's going on and go ahead and say that in this, God will be glorified. Maybe you're in financial pain and you say, I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to pay attention. And you look up and your economy is totally in wreck. But no, we understand that God is working. Go ahead, type it in. God is working in all things. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to God's purpose. The pain that you may be experiencing causes you to reflect on your life and to make some new life choices. It causes deeper compassion and empathy for others. It causes a great sense of gratitude and appreciation for every day you wake up. It will cause you to take action. It will cause you to become healthier and wholer in your relationship in the midst of the pain. I am finding greater purpose in life. It turned into an instrument of praise, an instrument of inspiration. Do you realize that God wants to take your life and use it as an instrument of inspiration? That you're not living just for yourself, but you're living so that others will see your journey and see God working through it as an inspiration. And that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying we're citizens of heaven, not just citizens of earth. We're just passing through. And sometimes we got to cry. Sometimes we get hurt. Sometimes we get wounded. Sometimes we just don't know what to do because the pain can become so great. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Maybe it's in your family. Maybe it's at the job. I don't know. Maybe it's in your church. Maybe it's in your community. Maybe it's just in you. But Paul says this. He says, brothers and sisters, I like this, whom I love and long for. He said, you're my joy. You're my crown. And he says, stand firm in the Lord in this way, beloved. 
stand firm. In the midst, stand firm. Stand firm in your trouble. Stand firm in your challenge. Stand firm in your pain, and your pain will help you discover purpose, and your purpose will turn into inspiration, and others will see you standing. And when they see you standing, he says in Ephesians 6, go on, put on the whole armor of God. Go on and put it on that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Go ahead and put your armor on. Put your power on. Put your whole armor on so that you can stand against anything that comes against you. Fasten up your belt of truth around your waist and your breastplate of righteousness. Put the shoes upon your feet and make you ready to proclaim the gospel peace. Stand! And then he says, make sure you have a shield of faith that can quench the fiery throes of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Stand! Paul does a great job because he helps us to understand. And he says in verse 19, pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. Stand! And Paul does a great job, but his words are in the ancient world. And Donnie McClurkin does a better job in our cultural context. He says, when you have done all that you can do, and it seems like it's never enough, and when your friends turn away and you're all alone, he said, stand. When there's nothing left to do, stand. When you are written with guilt and shame, stand. Stand, endure. God has a purpose. God has a plan. Stand in the rain, through the hurt, through the pain. Don't bow down. Don't bend. Hold on, be strong, stand. And after you've gone through the hurt and the pain and you've gone through the storm and the rain, when you've, pri when you've prayed and when you've cried, then stand. Stand until your pain reveals the purpose and the purpose turns into, into an inspiration to others and you receive, I like this, the promise of God. And the promise of God is I will take care of you in this world and in the world to come. Beloved, whatever you are going through, you are not alone. God has not forsaken you, and in the midst of your pain, the glory of God will be revealed. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the blessing of Christ. And we pray for any who have not accepted Christ, they would follow in this short prayer, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior, and I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I give God glory, and I give God praise. If you had prayed that prayer for the first time and you accepted Christ as your Lord, please connect with us. Help us to help you. We want to walk beside you, not with any religiosity, not with any rules and regulations, but just with the love of God. We want to be a blessing to you and just help you as you step forward in faith, that your faith can be alive like fire. It can be real in your life. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. And I want to tell you, if no one told you today, I need to tell you, I love you in the Lord. God loves you. I want you to have a spectacular day and an even better tomorrow. And again, it is such a joy to be able to just share a little bit of the gospel with you today. God bless you. I'm Pastor Kimbrough. Have a wonderful day. And again, thank you for making Mount Carmel your church.